Hi, Coach. How you doing? Yo, it's okay. You're great. Thank you for your time. First and foremost, congratulations and welcome to Omaha. Um, we're going to um, open up a question. We'll ask Coach for an opening statement, then we'll ask uh, the student athletes questions, and then we'll dismiss them before we go back to questions for Coach. So, Coach, can you please give us an opening statement? Yeah, just it's it's the third time I've been here, but every time is equally special. It's not like the first time I came here or in 21. It's just they're all the same. I, I Herb Sindek was a, a friend of mine, Coach Basketball, at NC State, and he always says, Elliot, you're overselling things. You tell people it's the greatest movie you've ever seen, best restaurant I've ever been to, and then they go there, they go, you know, the expectation's not there. And that's good advice, but I, I told our players, and I've told them all year, so Carrot, I hang out there, that Omaha is the greatest thing you'll ever do in your life. I think even if you go to the college, I mean, if you go to the World Series, I think Trey Turner told me one time this might have been just as fun as the World Series he played in, in uh, with the Nationals. But um, So I've sold this place like you wouldn't believe it. I think Omaha, Nebraska is the one place you can oversell and you still undersell it. And I've asked our players, what do you think? They say, Coach, it's better than you said. So it's just a tribute to this city, this organization that runs this place, how nice everybody that you run into are from everywhere you go. And it's just, I, I can't tell you how special it is. And to see these guys here means the absolute world to me. Thank you, Coach. We'll open, the question, we'll open now for questions for the student athletes. First question right here. Hey, Sam. Um, Eric Olson with the Associated Press. Started to ask you this outdoors. Uh, just take me through your memories of that last game that you played here in Omaha in 2021 as far as, I mean, the Iron 13 players for NC State and how you played Vanderbilt real close and you played a key role in that. Yeah, it was a roller coaster of a day. Um, so many good and bad memories from that 24-hour period. Um, and, like, obviously, like, means a lot to be a part of something that was that special and, uh, you know, etched in Wolfpack history. But I also, you know, every time I think about that 13, like, I think about the 14 guys that couldn't be out there that day. And so, um, yeah, it was, it was great. But, you know, I'm just excited to be back. Questions for the players right here? Hey, Sam. Hey, Alec. John Huang, NOLA Media. You get to this big stage, and everybody talks about all the distractions that are out there. What has been the most difficult challenge for you in limiting those off-the-field distractions, and, and how have you managed to do that? Yeah, it's a good point. Uh, I mean, when you get here, it's just like <laughs> it's, a, it's kind of overwhelming. Um, uh, similar to how it felt a couple years ago, like you're just, you're just so overwhelmed, like uh, – so excited to be here and you know we got a couple of days before we play but you know there's all sorts of things going on every single day and so you just got to do your best to uh, focus for that 50 minute period we have out there like really focus get your throwing in get your swings in um, and just you know keep your mind on on baseball I would say like going off what Sam said um, you know you got to soak it in and enjoy it you know we've earned we've earned it um there's a lot of fans out there that want our attention so we give them give them our time but when it's time to go I think we're going to spread the word around especially to the younger guys like let's let's go do business Sam uh, Eric again with the AP I, I just wanted to follow up uh, did you ever think you'd get back here after what happened in 21 I mean is it surreal to be back here yeah it's so incredibly hard to get here um and you know we found that out the past couple of years. It's just it's so incredibly hard. You, everybody you have to beat to get here is such a good team. And so um, the goal was always to be back. And I knew it wasn't going to be easy, but I definitely thought uh, every year you know we had a shot. And that's all you need is find a way to postseason, and then you're five or six wins away. Go. 
Uh, to, to that point, I mean, you guys have come from a very tough conference, fought it out, and especially playing some really good ball, really good complimentary ball the last couple of weeks. What has it been like in the lineup when you got a guy like Sam on that bump or just a talented bullpen? What's it like batting and still giving your team a chance to pull out wins? I think the biggest thing that that gives us is just the confidence, especially as an offense. Um, I think one through nine, too, we just – everyone can do damage, especially when there's two outs, I feel like. We just, we're so confident even with two outs in the inning, it's, it's not over. Now, Kentucky plays a very, very aggressive style of, of baseball. Uh, what their, their whole goal is to try to put pressure on you and make you make mistakes. Uh, is there any way that you're specifically preparing for, for that? How, how do you kind of program your mindset to be able to deal with, with that pressure? Yeah, I mean, they're a very talented team, very athletic, uh, a ton of good players, a ton of good pitchers, and you just have to play fundamental baseball. Like, if, if they're going to try and give you outs, then you have to be able to take them and, and not not compound mistakes because that's, you know, that's, that's what those offenses uh, live on. And so we just have to do our best to make the fundamental plays. Yeah, I would say going off that, I mean, we can't really try to do too much, you know, make the routine plays and – just go out there and play the game. Any other questions for the student athletes? Over here. here. Um, it, Brady Oldman's helping out uh, Raleigh News Observer. I know we're working on a story about just there's so much that you can control, and uniforms being one of them, and there's always some good superstitions and things that go into it at a place that, Sam, you've got history on. Alec, you're here for the first time. What goes into to picking out what, what you wear? And any special thoughts that go into it? <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's <laughs> we have a, we have a lineup of uniforms. Sometimes coach asks me. Sometimes he asks the other guys. Sometimes if he has something he wants to wear, then he might say, "Let's wear this." Uh, I don't know what we're wearing game one, but you know, <laughs> whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Last time, last time, I think I think we wore. Black and pinstripes. I don't know if we brought the pinstripes this year, but um, yeah, we, we won in the black on last weekend. So who knows? Maybe. I'd say it really doesn't matter to me. I'm just here to play some ball. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions, gentlemen? You can be excused. Uh, best you, of luck and enjoy your time. Thank you. Thank you, Sally. Go ahead and take them back, and I'll. Oh, if it ain't, take them back, and I'll walk. I'll walk back. Just give me, you got my wallet. Give me my wallet so I can get the key to the room. I'll walk back. Take, make sure they get back, and I'll walk back. It'll do me good. Thank you very much. We'll give you back, Coach. Well, I can, I can walk. I know you can. No, I'm I'm the worst direction person in the world. But I'll, I I ask people. I don't. Gee, they said my sister says just GPS. I just stop and ask people. Can't be that far. <laughs> Walk will do me good. We'll open it for questions. First question for Coach. Back to you. Jason Patterson, I own CWS. Coach, you, you talk about your own journey walking, but how about the journey here? How far back does the dream go for you? You talked about how great this place is. How far back does the dream go, and what discoveries along the way would you attribute to leading a team here? That's a, that's a good question, and I think I got a decent answer for it because it's, it's a little long-winded, and but this is exactly what you ask. When I was at New Mexico State, I had no money personally. I think my first salary was six thousand dollars. Next year I made eleven thousand. Next year fifteen. My boss kept telling me what a big increase he was giving me, and I was still below the poverty line. And so the Yes Clinic, I don't know if it's still here, but they had a Yes Clinic back then, and they paid me money to come out there and work it. And uh, but I couldn't afford to rent a car, so Joe Arnold from Florida, Eddie Cartieri from South Florida, they drove me everywhere they went. But they said, "Now we know you're just a baseball rat. We're not going to every game. We're going to go to some horse races too. So we'll take you wherever you go." But uh, I did that. So I did that Yes Clinic out here, and I fell in love with this place. But I swore I'd never come back ever, unless I brought a team with me, and uh, I've stuck to that promise. And it's just. This is – every team is so different. It never – like I said, it's, ne it's never changed. The first time I got here, I remember special moments. Like I remember they, had, they have a little league 
team, you know, like a World Series going on too. I remember outside my window, I saw two of our players playing wiffle ball with one of the Little League teams. I thought it was one of the coolest moments I've ever seen. And there's just so much here to embrace and enjoy. But so coming here every time is the same. It's just magical. And like, it's, it's, if you wake up for Christmas when you're eight years old and you wake up for Christmas 10 years old or 12 years old and the presents under the tree and the anxiousness of Santa Claus coming and all that kind of stuff, that's what this is to me, no matter your age, no matter how many times you've been here. This is the most magical place for a baseball player I think that can ever be. Yeah, Kevin Brackwick, Angel said, um, you know, a question was asked earlier about Kentucky's aggressive style. How equipped do you guys feel like you are to handle it in terms of, uh, you know, holding runners on the catch a game and stuff because they're probably going to run a lot? Yeah, you, you can't prepare. As I was listening to Sam and Alec answer those questions, if you got to prepare for what a team does right now, you're not going to be ready. You prepare for that in the fall and January, February, and all year long. So if you're not prepared for the style of baseball that Kentucky plays now, you're not going to get prepared this week. So I think we catch the baseball. I think we're pretty good defensively. I think we hold runners pretty good. I think we got some experience. And uh, I, we may not be ready, but we'll find out. Hey, I'll add uh, Eric Olson, Associated Press. Kind of like I was asking Sam, uh, you know, as far as here you guys are back three years later, how long did it take for the sting of 2021 to wear off for you, if it, if it has? Oh, yeah, the, the sting of 21 wore off immediately for me. Uh, I remember being in that room at 1.30 in the morning telling the players we were going home, and I didn't see a dry eye or, or smile the entire bus ride to the airport, entire f- flight home, and... When we got back to the stadium, there was like 2,000 people waiting for us, unbeknownst to us, total surprise. And as the players walked on the field and we saw 2,000 people in the stands and they had a microphone and I spoke and some players spoke, it's the first time I saw the healing process begin and the smiles come back on the faces. Uh, and they knew how admired they were. I think that was America's team that year. Everybody talked about this is America's team. So, But if you're going to do a job and if you're going to – like I'll pick our sport, baseball. If you're going to be the baseball coach here, if you if you try to coach beyond that with that on your mind, you're never going to prepare another team to. Do. So I I put that. There's certain things I can't put behind me, um, and one's the death of my mother and father, and good friends along the way that eat at me every day. Uh, I was talking to Aaron Fit. Like I'd have to, love to have Bruce Winkworth here to me today. He was with me forever, and. Uh, George Tarantini was always sitting in the crowd no matter what big game I won. He was like, he always found a way to be sitting out there in a, in a press conference like that. But, uh, you know, I've never thought about the scene of 21 since then. It doesn't mean I've forgotten, and it doesn't mean I forgive because I have, because neither one exists. But uh, I, don't, I don't ever think about it. Who, who would you, Go ahead. Who would you forgive? Sir? Who would you forgive? I said I don't forgive. I know, but who would you? Who would be eligible to be? They know who they are. <laughs> they know who they are. Yeah. And then Noah Flesh from the Wolfpacker. Coach, your guys' team is the fewest transfers. Of the eight teams here, you have the fewest transfers, the most guys you've recruited. You know, what does that say about your program to, you know, be able to get to this stage without having to plug so many holes, but when you do, you can find a guy like Alec or, or Brandon or something like that. Yeah, the transfer portal now, you know, we're all adapting to it. It's it's a it's a thing that Ron Polk, I remember when we didn't have, when we had transfers, whatever it was, 30 years ago, and Ron Polk and I, who's one of the most legendary baseball coaches and smartest minds in, in all of baseball, we had a cab ride back from Ride, New York, to LaGuardia to catch a flight, and we discussed it because they were going to stop the, tr- the transfer. You know, you had to sit out a year. There was only four sports sitting out a year, so it didn't really make sense how you treat so many sports differently. So I understood Ron's uh, point on that. But I didn't like people going all over the place, right, and, and coaches going to the Cape Cod trying to get somebody else's player. So that's where we're at again. But basically what the transfer portal is right now, Noah, for me, is I've always believed in recruiting high school players and developing them. That's always been the heart and soul of our program at NC State because uh, we're all about development. And you can't develop people in a year like like you take Alec Makarevich and, and – um, 
Garrett Pennington and Brandon Butterworth, are we really a part of their success? It's Their success was born long before they got to NC State. But when you try to develop freshmen and young men to get better, it takes a while, right? So what the transfer portal is for us right now is what the junior college market used to be for us. You have your players, you develop, you lose somebody to the draft that you didn't expect or something happens with an injury, and you just try to plug holes with junior college players. Now we're doing that through the transfer portal. But I don't believe in building a whole t- team through the transfer portal every year. That's, that's not what we're all about, and that's not what I believe in. Hi, Coach. John Huang, NOLA Media. Coach Min Jeon was up there before you, and he was just so excited. You could tell it in his voice. This is his first time here as a head coach. Uh, for those of us who are a little bit older, can you tell the world why it's so important, age and experience, what difference that can make in this situation? Uh, I don't know. I think it's all about players personally. I think coaches, I think we get in the way, way more than, uh, than uh, we help deliver results. I think our job is to, along the path of all fall and all preseason and all season long, I think that's when age and experience may matter with some things you do. Or so. I know that third game at Georgia was tough to play, and we sat there all day long in that hotel waiting for that game, and I could just feel the nerves, you know, uh, ramping up in me. So if it's ramping up in me at my age, I can imagine what it was doing to some of the players. And... Uh, I think that's where age and experience might come in a little bit. But players win games. Coaches, sometimes we get in the way. At this point, Coach Esposito was the greatest uh, sports mind that I've probably ever – I've been around so many great people. Uh, It's unbelievable. The list is so long. But Jimmy V, who everybody – he's nationally known. He taught me so much in being around him uh, for a while. And But Coach Esposito, who built NC State's program – I learned probably more from him. I think we all did at NC State. He's a legendary figure there. We call him the Godfather. And uh, he always told me, uh, uh, let the players win games when you get to this stage. Don't try to get in the way. Don't try to do too much. And you've done your job, and now let the players. And that's kind of what I live by. Avery Howard with Herd Out Sports. just want to talk about the split of the SEC and the ACC and just – you know, maybe there's a little bit more of a rivalry there, but also on the other hand, just talk about the strength of which the ACC was this season. Yeah, I think I think I've been in this league for 28 years now, and I think this league has changed so much through the years. Obviously, it's expanded, and we added teams. And I was here when I, there was eight teams. I was here when there were nine teams. So it's expanded so much, and and with that uh, come some teams that had to adapt to how tough the league was, but. We always remember recent memory, and I think the league is as strong as it's ever been from top to bottom. But I don't know if there's so much – for me it's not. A rivalry with the SEC is a respect with the SEC. That's what it is for me. Um, Two great leagues, but there are a lot of great leagues in this country that don't get talked about. But when it gets to four and four, that's – I know it's a good story because we are probably – a lot of people talk about us being the two best leagues in the country, but it's not a rivalry with me. It's just simple respect. Yeah. Uh, Jackson Ray is the Omaha World Herald. Um, can you just talk about what it means to you to have a guy like Sam get back here and have another chance in playing in the College World Series? Well, it means it means absolutely everything. I thought his answer was unreal. I thought his answer was who he is. Taking any team back here is special, but. We have four guys, I believe. Tyler can help me. I think it's four guys. Seven that were on that 21 team that were part of this year's team, but four that are here with us now. And for those guys to get back here, because nobody will ever understand how difficult, and I've had some difficult conversations in my career with players over many things. The hardest thing I've ever done is having to sit 27 players who gave their heart and soul and blood and sweat and to achieve a goal of a lifetime and tell them we were going home. So to have those four guys back on this trip, it, it means it means a lot to me. So with that, Coach, you talked about your long journey getting here. 
you see a guy like Sam and those guys who have been here before, what have you seen from them to take on kind of that mentorship role with other, you know, their teammates who just haven't been here before? How, how have you kind of seen them kind of usher those guys who haven't been here uh, since you've been in Omaha already? Well, it's, I'm learning more. You learn more from players than, than you ever teach them probably. And, uh, I probably talk to players more this time of the year about things that I, I try to stay away from. Uh, I, I, I talked to Logan Whitaker, who epitomizes Jimmy V's legendary statement that we all live by at NC State and hopefully across the, the world, is don't give up, don't ever give up. And uh, Logan Whitaker went through so many injuries, everybody gave up on him, and he didn't give up on himself. And so to see every time he toes the rubber, it's just amazing to me. It epitomizes what, what Coach V said. And um, like I said, sitting around that hotel room all day, playing that great Georgia team in front of that great crowd, uh, we all started to get some butterflies, right? And they just kept growing and growing and growing. And, and uh, I talked to Logan, I think it was the night before last. I just, he just showed up at the field. I was at the field, he showed up at the field. And we got to talking about that game three at Georgia. He said he called Matt Willis, and Matt Willis is not with us. He, uh, he was the guy that pitched that third game against Arkansas to get us here in 21. He called Matt Willison to ask him for any advice he had on what it's like controlling your nerves on, game, on a game three to get your team to the World Series, who you love so much. And Matt talked to him for 30 minutes, and then he wrote him back a text, which Logan read to me. And I thought, doggone it. I said, this is what it's all about. And Logan looked at me and said, Coach, I know you know how close this team is, but I don't think you really, really can conceptualize how really close this team is. This is unbelievable. And Logan's been on like six of our teams. And uh, I, uh, when you hear something like that from a player, it's what you try to do as a coach. You try to build those relationships to where they play for each other. And that's when it becomes very special. And that's when you feel like maybe you've done your job. Any questions for Coach? Not Coach, congratulations again and best of luck this weekend. And thank you all. I mean, this is everything here is special, but so is the media. Y'all, I know y'all probably love this event. If I, I'd love to cover it myself. It's just, it's kind of cool. And you get to talk to eight teams. And anyway, y'all have been so nice. Thank y'all very much. Thank you. And now somebody can direct me back to the Hilton Garden Inn. <laughs> <laughs> just, just point me.